Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McCray. Endometriosis is a disorder in which tissue that normally lines the inside of the uterus, the endometrium, grows outside the uterus. Endometriosis most commonly affects the ovaries, fallopian tubes, and the tissue lining the pelvis. Endometriosis. Something you've heard of? Of course, yeah. It can cause pain and sometimes severe and especially especially during menstruation, really severe pain. Fertility problems can also develop. Fortunately, there are treatment options that are available. And here to discuss is Mayo Clinic gynecologist, Dr. Tatney Burnett. Welcome to the program, Dr. Burnett. It's nice to meet you. Pleasure to meet all of you. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Dr. Burnett, thank you for coming. Um, This disease is a little bit difficult to understand, I think, for anyone. So if you have a patient, a new patient, how do you explain to them what's wrong with them? Well, I think the way you described it initially is is essentially the approach that I take. You know, it's tissue from inside the uterus that's outside of the uterus functioning in a way that it's not supposed to function. Um, you know, it's a strange disease because, as you said, it has different manifestations of symptoms. Um, and unfortunately, there are many patients who also don't have symptoms. We diagnose it very late. So often women go through long mm-hmm. periods of time where they don't know that they have a problem that can be treated. Um, and often are just uh, their symptoms are normalized and they're told, well, periods are just painful, you know, suck it up, deal sure. with it. Yep. Yeah. Why does it happen? That's a great question. There are probably six, seven theories um, that we rely on to help explain. Uh, but ultimately, we do not know which theory is correct. And we do not know if maybe multiple theories are correct and there are different etiologies in different patients. Probably the most commonly held theory is uh, one known as Samson's theory. Uh, we know that 80, 90 percent of women actually menstruate backwards through the fallopian tube. So while they bleed forwards through the vagina, they also menstruate backwards through the fallopian tubes. That probably mm. deposits some endometrial cells in the pelvis. Wow. Well, no, I never knew that. Yep. This is why we have knowledgeable guests. Retrograde menstruation. Retrograde menstruation, that's right. And it's postulated that that might be one of the ways that cells from the inside of the uterus implant themselves in the pelvis. Um, That being said, we have plenty of uh, patients who have disease in locations that aren't explained by that one theory. So we use other theories to explain why they might have disease, for instance, on the diaphragm or in the liver or, you know, other places. Is it... Is, I would imagine that there's people trying to figure out the reason why. That's what some of the research is. Correct. The you know, problem we have in endometriosis is that, unfortunately, it's not a sexy disease. It doesn't have a lot of research um, going on compared to things like cancers or other more what are considered more high-impact diseases. Also, it has to do with women. It affects women instead of men. Correct. Oh, no, Correct. Tracy. Tom, uh, yeah. oh, come on. I think women get a lot of attention from the health community <laughs> and, and medical care. It's, uh, it's he agreed granted. with me. <laughs> well, okay. It right. may take I'm a outgoing. little more attention yeah. yet to even the score. But. I think it used to be a m- much bigger problem than Just it gonna. is now. We pay a lot of attention to women because you realize now how valuable you are. Oh, that's nice recovery. Nice try. But I'm moving over by him over here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, continue. Uh, Yes, so we talked about the retrograde menstruation or Samson's theory. The other theories that are commonly uh, discussed are, you know, we know cells in the body can change their cell type. We call that metaplasia. Um, And is it possible that cells where they are might be changing to endometriosis instead of endometriosis being transported into a different location? Um, That might explain uh, why some of the cells lining the pleural cavity, for instance, might um, change into endometriosis. The pleural cavity, you mean the the lung? lung. Correct, that's right. Um, We have seen endometriosis in pretty much every tissue in the body. So there's been endometriosis diagnosed in the brain and uh, other locations. And uh, one other theory is that maybe it spreads like a cancer. Maybe it goes through veins or lymphatic channels um, and is transported throughout the body. So, you know, those are probably three of the most commonly discussed theories. There are more, such as that it's congenital. Maybe you're born with the endometriosis that you have um, and other more minor theories as well. Let's talk about the the symptoms. Obviously pain. Uh, What else? And, And where is do they usually have pain? So pain most commonly is pain associated with menses. It's fairly common as well that that pain may precede menses by a day or two or longer. 
It's because these cells that have, uh, the endometrial cells that have gone elsewhere also menstruate? Correct. So they respond to hormones typically like the cells inside of the uterus still respond to hormones. Um, in the second half of the cycle before a woman menstruates, those cells are responding to progesterone. Progesterone causes uh, the cells to kind of stabilize and get ready to be shed. And that stabilization can cause a little bit of pain as well. Do most women with endometriosis not have pain between menses? Uh, that's a good question. Um, you know, we differentiate that as dysmenorrhea or pain with menses and chronic pelvic pain, pain that's outside of the cyclic menses. Um, and the, I would say there, it's definitely more common to have dysmenorrhea, uh, but it's not uncommon for women to transition from just dysmenorrhea or pain with menses into pain that's all the time. So uh, I think the longer women have endometriosis, the more likely they are to convert over into chronic pelvic pain as opposed to just pain with periods. What it means to me is that you can't have children. Is that what endometriosis ultimately means? Not necessarily. So endometriosis is associated with infertility. Uh, however, not all women with endometriosis have infertility. Wow. Yeah. And again, the relationship isn't that clear. There are most common way to describe endometriosis and its location is the ASRM revised staging criteria. Um, that uh, gives points for different locations of endometriosis. And it actually doesn't really describe fertility, um, fertility's relationship to endometriosis that well. Um, but what we do know is that women with stage three or four have a higher likelihood of infertility than women with stage one or two. All right, treatment. What have we got? Essentially, you have two arms. Manage with medications or treat with surgery. And most experts recommend after treating with surgery to continue medical management. Uh, first thing to understand is that really uh, medications don't uh, change the disease in a fundamental way. So if you have things stuck together in the pelvis, if you have endometriosis nodule, the medication will treat the symptom, but it typically doesn't make the nodule or the endometriosis go away. And medication, what kind of medication? Is it hormonal We treatment? typically rely heavily on progesterones. Um, or medications that have progesterones and other things such as birth control pills. Um, we can get more aggressive with medications that block hormones in one way or another as well. So you, you can't stop endometriosis then? If, is that what the medication does? So it's really not clear if our first steps of medical management, the progesterones, change the disease course, oh. actually change what will happen to you after being five years on medication versus not using the medication. So we don't know that it fundamentally changes what uh, the outcome of the disease is going to be in any individual. All right, surgical options. So most experts now are recommending that we excise endometriosis. That means cut it out where we find it. Um, commonly in the past, we used to burn it or fulgurate it. Um, the problem is, you know, there are different forms of endometriosis, superficial uh, endometriosis that coats things, deep endometriosis that uh, uh, burrows into tissue or takes up space. Mm. And if you just burn on the top of some of the deeper disease, you're really not treating it. Uh, and we often see women here who present with that. They've had prior surgery, they still have pain, and we go in and we find deeper disease that was just burned on the surface. So uh, when you excise disease, you are able to identify if you're cutting through a deeper lesion or not and adjust your technique and take out the whole lesion. When you burn it, it's harder to identify if the lesion's a deep lesion or superficial. So we recommend excising. Now, does this mean hysterectomy in most instances? Not Removal necessarily. Of the uterus? So there's a fine line understanding how hysterectomy is related to endometriosis. While we do think that some of the endometrial tissue may come from the uterus in some woman, removing the uterus alone doesn't treat the endometriosis where it is. So you can take out the uterus and still have endometriosis in the ovary or on the pelvic sidewall and just in the tissues around the uterus. So really you do have to excise the endometriosis where it is. Um, some evidence uh, recently that women who are less than age uh, 35 who have a hysterectomy for endometriosis in particular have an increased risk of heart disease later on. That's correct. So anything that we do that affects a woman's long-term exposure to her natural hormones will affect risks for those postmenopausal type diseases. When we do a hysterectomy, the uterus does share some blood supply with the ovaries, even though the ovaries have their own blood supply. And uh, so we know that women typically go through menopause one to two years on average earlier when they have a hysterectomy despite keeping their ovaries. All right, unusual strange disease, but it's good to know that there are treatment available, both medical and surgical. Dr. Tatney Burnett from the Department of Gynecology, Mayo Clinic, thanks so much for being with us. Thanks so much for having me. It's a pleasure.